In this example, we are given some data where uh, the first row corresponds the co corresponds to the time in terms of hours, and the second row is the average blood alcohol concentration uh, for eight people. Okay, and that's starting after uh, one hour of consumption of thirty milliliters of ethanol. Okay, so what we want to do in this in the first part is we want to find the average change of C with respect to T over each of the following time intervals. Okay, so this is going to, so this is going to use the idea of this of the slope of the secant line. Okay, so let me explain that over here. So let's say we have a a function, just some arbitrary function. Okay. Okay, so this will be x, this will be y. Okay, let's say this is our function. Okay, and let's say right here we have x, and over here we have x plus h. Okay, so x plus h and x is, uh, the distance between them is h, okay. And right here we have, so that means, okay, this is, when we plug in x into our function, we get f of x. Okay, and right here we're going to get f of x plus h. Okay, so then we can, right, we can draw a line through these two points, okay. Right, so the slope of that secant line, okay, is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x. So the difference in the y values for those two points divided by the difference in x, which is going to give us h, okay. So that is the slope of the secant line. And Okay, and remember, if you take the limit, uh, if you take the limit of the of the slope as h approaches zero, then we we come up with the definition of the derivative. Okay, so this slope is used to approximate the rate of change on a given interval. In this case, our interval is between x and x plus h. So we're going to apply that to each of these intervals. Okay. All right, so, so for the first one, okay, we have delta, so this is a change in the blood alcohol concentration over time, okay? All right, so this is going to be F of 2, okay, minus f of 1 all divided by 2 minus 1 okay so that's exactly what this is this is the exact same thing as we have over here this is just finding the slope of the secant line uh, for this uh, between 1 and 2 for these for these values okay so the the y values are going to come from the table okay so for for the value of 2 so for two hours, okay, we have 0.18, okay, and for one, we have 0.31, okay, so we're going to have, okay, so we're going to get 0.18 minus 0 0.31 and that's all divided by 1. So this is going to give us a value of minus uh, negative 0 0.13. Okay, so we round to two decimal places. Okay. All right, so that's for the first, that's the average rate of change of C for the first uh, between the values of 1 and 2, 1 and 2. Okay. So we're going to do this next, 
So we're going to do the same thing for each of these intervals. Okay, so we have change of C over time. So we have F of 2 minus F of 1. Actually, this is 1.5. Okay, divided by 2 minus 1.5. Okay, so again at 2, we get the value of 0.18, and for 1.5, it will be 0.24. And then we divide by 2 minus 1.5, which is 0.5. So we end up getting negative 0 0.12, okay? All right, and for the units, okay, uh, we're going to have, for our units, uh, we have C of T, so this is going to be, so this is a change in the concentration over time. So this is C of, so this is going to be, so the concentration is in milligrams per milliliter. So this will be milligrams per milliliter per per time per okay per hour. Okay. Same thing with this one. It's milligrams per milliliter per hour. Okay. Okay, next one we have. Okay, we have delta C over delta T. And it's gonna be F of 2.5 minus F of 2. So again, the, the function values are coming from the table. Okay, so we have to, and then divide this by two point five minus two. So at two point five, we have zero point one two, and then f of two is zero point one eight. And then this is going to be divided by point five. So that's going to give us negative. 0 0.12 milligrams per milliliter per hour. Okay. All right. And for the last one, we have again delta C over delta T is going to be equal to F of 3 minus F of 2 divided by 3 minus 2. So F of 3 is going to be 0.08. minus the value at 2, which is 0 0.18. And this is going to be divided by 1. So we end up getting negative 0 0.1 milligram per milliliter per hour. Okay. All right. So the next one, part B, is asking for the uh, estimate of the instantaneous rate of change at t equals 2. Okay, so the way we can think about that is, again, let's look at it just a generic function. Okay, let's say our function is something like this. And let's say we have, here we have some value of x, okay? And out here, okay, we have, let's say x plus h. And over here, let's say we have x minus h, okay? All right, so we have, the distance between x and x minus h, right, is just h, and the distance between x plus h and x is also h, okay? All right, and so we have, we know here it's gonna be f of x plus h, uh, f of x minus h, and up here it's gonna be f of x plus h. 
So in so what we can do is, uh, in order to get a estimate of the instantaneous rate at x, okay. Okay, so we can do we can approximate that by using the average. Okay. So the velocity, okay, or the instantaneous rate. At so the velocity at x, it, it can be approximated by taking the average. Okay, so we can take the average of the function values at x plus h and x minus h. So we have f of x plus h plus f of x minus h, and we divide that by two. So we take the average. So we can apply the same idea here, okay, to estimate the instantaneous rate of change at t equals 2. Okay, so looking at these two values here, okay, all right, so we want to get the values around 2. Okay, so we have this value here and this one here. Okay, so think of this segment here, think of this interval. Okay, All right. That is a dist. So 1.5 is a distance of 0.5 from 2, and the distance between 2.5 and 2 is also 0.5. So if you think about this, the the two, the value of two is in the is in, is in the center. So this is acting as x in our diagram here. Okay. So what we can do is take the average of those two. Okay. To get our estimate, okay. So the okay. So our estimate. So the velocity or the instantaneous rate of change at two. Okay, that's going to be equal to negative zero point one two plus negative zero point one two, and then we take and divide this by two. Okay, and that's going to give us a value of negative 0 0.12. And this is going to be milligrams per milliliter per hour. Okay. All right. So again, we can estimate the instantaneous rate by uh, taking the average of the surrounding values at that point. Okay. So the surrounding values of two is one point five and and two and two point five. Okay, and so we take the average of the of the corresponding uh, values of our of, of C, okay, of the blood alcohol concentration, and then divide by two. Okay, and that gives us our solution. All right, and then for part A, we take the the average rate of change, okay, the average change of C over time, okay, and that is nothing more than just, that's based on the idea of the slope of the secant line.